Well, hello everyone. It's Angela with Mystic Moon bringing you guys a reading today, which is called Your Past Life Love Story. So this is going to be based upon a person that you feel a special connection with in this lifetime, and you just feel it deep in your heart that you must have had a past life connection with them. So that's what we're going to dive into. We're going to take a little bit of a deeper look at your love story with this person from the past and a few traumas and shadows and triggers that are coming up in this lifetime to be dealt with. And then we're going to do an extended version of this reading and we're going to go deeper and take a look at some other things. So I'm going to go ahead and put that link down below where you guys can access the extended version if you're interested or just enjoy this free version today. Okay. So all the decks that I'll be using will be listed down below and let's just dive right into this reading. So we're going to take a look and see what is your love story from the past with this person? What makes up your love story with them? What are the energies? Let's take a look. Ooh, we immediately have a card coming up. Temptation. <laughs> so it could be that you and this person, this was like a forbidden love. Uh, maybe you guys could not be together. Maybe there were other parts parties involved. Maybe there was just certain, you know, uh, belief systems or family dynamics where you guys couldn't be together. So it's like you were very tempted to be together, but maybe you couldn't exactly come together in the timing that you wanted. So you can see here in this image, it's like a ghost, right? it's this ghost energy. And then you have somebody that's in human form. So it's kind of like this, these two worlds that, that aren't able to come together and be together, though it's very, very tempting. So there's like this amount of maybe sneaking around to be with this person, or it's just a forbidden love. And that's what I'm seeing here. Forbidden love energy. So let's go ahead and see what else makes up this connection. What else is making up your, sorry, past life love with this person, your past life love story? Ooh. <laughs> okay, so I feel like you and your person were not able to be together right away because it says divine timing is at work in your love life. It says worth waiting for. I feel like one of you was not available. I feel like one of you maybe was with someone else. And that's the reason that you guys couldn't come together. This particular dynamic could be replaying in this life as well. So just take this as, as it resonates. But someone either wasn't ready, they couldn't be, um, you guys couldn't be together for some reason. It could be like somebody was off in war. And so, you know, you were waiting for this person to return, but it's like you're waiting for this person or maybe they're waiting for you. So there's this dynamic of waiting and can't, you can't be together with this person for some reason. Let's try to see if we can get some details on this. Why couldn't we be with this person? What was the holdup here? What was the situation? Ooh, eight of arrows, eight of swords. So the eight of swords is some kind of stuck energy imprisonment. Wow. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, it could even be literal. Uh, you guys couldn't be together because someone went, was in prison, like they were in prison. Um, they went to prison for trying to be with you or you, or something like that. So, uh, there are some sort of punishment and, or, or there would be punishment, of course, if you guys did come together. Now it might not be an actual imprisonment, but it's like somebody was with someone else. And so they were imprisoned in that situation, but really their heart was with you or vice versa or both. Wow. Very little interesting story that's unfolding here. So let's see what else we need to know about your love story. What other details are going on here? Okay. We also have procrastination. Okay. So of course there is this feeling here of not being able to be together, but as we know, the eight of swords is one of those cards where we could leave, we could, but we're choosing not to. So I feel like the story for the past, uh, love story is that someone actually could have escaped, but they chose not to, maybe they chose to stay because of children or family, or they didn't want to be judged, or they, they didn't know how they were going to take care of themselves. So there was this fear perhaps that, um, we, we couldn't, that we were going to lose out on something. So we kind of procrastinated out of our own fear. Mm -hmm. So let's, that could be happening in this life too. 
Interesting. I almost feel like this is parallel for, for somebody. Some of you are replaying this out again. We have pa yeah, a lot of passion here, though. That uh, temptation and that passion. And when the two of you were allowed to come together and be together. So this was not the kind of connection where you never were able to come together. There were gl like little times where you guys could come together. So allow your, your heart sang with joy. Your hearts and soul sang with joy. And um, your, your hearts were just soaring when you guys were together. Okay. But it's like we couldn't be together. And I almost feel like that even made it more exciting because this was not something that you had access to all the time. So there was this amount of longing to be with this person, or it feels like you're in this prison because you want to be with this person so badly. So, uh, this, like I said, could be replaying again, just at least these feelings could be replaying themselves again in this life where there's a lot of, there's a lot of either, um, just angst to be with this person. There's a lot of intense, almost pain, we feel like we're in physical pain because we want to be with this person so bad. That's what I'm seeing here. And we have the Ace of Staves. So, of course, that crown, though, shows me royalty. I almost feel like someone was in a position um, where they could not be with someone else. It had something to do with that. They couldn't. But of course, the Ace of Wands is, um, you know, you come together, you meet someone, there's a lot of passion, there's a lot of fire, but I feel like you guys were not able to ever get to the next level. It's like you met, you, you, you were able to, you know, experience this energy, but you were not able to take it like to the Four of Wands. And it could be because someone else already had a Four of Wands situation. They had already built a life or a foundation with someone else. That's what I'm seeing here. So let's go ahead and get one more layer. Hopefully this resonates so far with my viewers. Let's see what else we need to know about this, uh, <laughs> this very torrid love affair, it seems. Ooh, man, someone sold out. Someone did not choose someone here. That's what I'm seeing in this past life love story. Someone procrastinated and someone sold out. So instead of choosing the person that they had this like passion and love for somebody that their heart sung with like joy, their heart and soul was just soaring with joy whenever they were with you and they felt so good in your presence, they sold out and stayed in another situation because it was either safe, easier or acceptable, socially acceptable. So they sold themselves out. And, um, I feel like deep down inside this person was not happy with this decision, but they felt like that's what they had to do. So, all right, let's go ahead and get one more. We have flirt. So yeah, um, I do feel though that there was more than just flirt and passion with this connection, but it's like you guys could have actually been in the same uh, vicinity to where you found secret ways to show your interest or to kind of like, you know, exchange looks here and there, but you had to be lighthearted in front of other people. So you had to act a certain way in front of other people. So people would not find out that you guys had this connection. It's just very interesting to me, the story that's coming through. So it's like two lovers that couldn't come together for whatever reason. And I feel like for a lot of you, it had something to do with other people being in the mix and it wasn't socially acceptable for you to be with this person. And so someone sold out and, and stayed in a situation, even though there might've been this, um, promise to be together. Somebody waited, you know, worth waiting for somebody waited for someone, but they never came back or they never made that decision. sacrifice. Yeah. They, somebody sacrificed the ultimate love. That's what I'm getting here. The hangman's energy. So the hangman is all about making a sacrifice for family, making a sacrifice for maybe a greater good, greater cause or something like that. So someone sold out and made a sacrifice and felt that it was best that they stayed in their situation because maybe they couldn't sacrifice their position. They couldn't sacrifice their family. They couldn't sacrifice something. Maybe you almost feel like you were the one that was sacrificed at the end of the day because you came together with this person and there was this, you know, immense just feeling this uh, it's very powerful energy here. And you thought that it was going to, 
you know, you, you were going to be able to finally get to a destination, but I feel like it never was able to. So I'm actually going to get one more layer. I was going to stop at three, but I feel like we need a little bit more here. We have pride. Wow. At the end of the day, somebody may have just had too much pride, too much pride to uh, kind of choose their heart. They had too much pride to do something. And on, on the bottom of the deck, I have hole in the soul. So I feel like somebody was left in a hole in their soul. So somebody comes into this life with this hole in their soul. So when you meet this person, I feel like this is the person watching the video. I feel like you are the one with the hole in the soul. And this person basically was not available in a previous lifetime. And I feel like if you have met them again, they still may not be available. It might not be because of another person. It could just be that they're just not available because they're coming through as this skeleton. You're this body of, uh, you know, blood and flesh and they're very much a skeleton. So they're like not there. They're not available. And I just feel like just participating with them in this life reactivates this hole in your soul that was left over from this previous life. So you guys are like reenacting the situation and this person might have too much pride or they had too much pride back then to kind of like maybe even admit that they were wrong or say that they're sorry or to make amends with you. So it left this hole in your soul. That's what I'm seeing here. So if some of you guys in this life are dealing with someone who's acting a certain way, but they're not really taking responsibility or they're not making a decision and they're just kind of focusing on how they feel, but they're not really considering everybody else. I feel like this could be reactivating this hole all over again, a wound. And we have finances and career, and I'm not going to say that that, you know, what this person decided to do was, um, you know, the right thing, but they feel it was the right thing. And they probably feel that way in this life. If you're finding that this is the same scenario, I have to stay because of this, or I have to work on myself, whatever it is, this person feels like there's something that they need to build or something that they have. It's something attached to the material world though. It's to me, this is Capricorn's energy, kind of like devil's energy. We feel attached to the things that we've built up. We're not willing to part ways with it. We don't want to lose power or control. So we stay with people for the wrong reasons. Okay. But if this person doesn't have someone else, but I feel like they did in the past, but if they don't have someone else in this life, I almost feel like they feel, uh, they're more driven power, they're, they're money hungry or power hungry, or they're feeding their ego, or they're too much in the physical, their physical world that feels safe to them. They, they don't want to lose touch with their physical world. That's what feels real to them. So they might even sacrifice a connection like yours because they feel like they can count on this. I don't know what that is, but it could just be their own, their own trauma that they're carrying on over. king of staves, king of wands. I feel like this is the person that you guys are dealing with, the king. The king of wands is, uh, well, it's Leo's energy. And the Leo can be full of pride. The Leo wants to be in a position of power and authority. I feel like, um, you know, they, they may have a lot of ambition because usually the king of wands does. He has a lot of ambition. He has a lot of goals. So some of you guys could just be dealing with someone who wants to just they, they want to achieve a lot in this world and, and, and power and position is more important to them at this time than maybe a relationship or a commitment. And it could be because they sacrificed love with you in this previous life and they don't want to be in that position again. So maybe they have made it their love, to, like their career or themselves, their love. And so that's why you're feeling this like second place in their life again. Interesting. So that's what we have so far. So I'm not sure if this, well, I mean, this is past life energy, which can, of course, you know, depict a lot of the things that you are experiencing with this person now. So if that doesn't sound like your story, I might not be connected to your energy, but if it does sound like your story, let's go ahead and get, um, go into the next section.
Okay, so the next thing that we're going to focus on is shadows, traumas, and issues that have that are basically coming up in this life. So even though we kind of, I was already getting some of this energy here, let's go ahead and see what's coming up in this life. What are the energies coming up in this life? Okay, so this is being triggered. Now, trigger doesn't always have to be a negative. It just means that a trigger can be like we are feeling some sort of way. We're feeling some sort of energy. We have muse. I will awaken the best parts of you. Okay, what I'm getting you guys, when you meet this person in this life, you guys activate and awaken each other. So you recognize yourselves as counterparts. And when I say counterparts, that doesn't mean like you, they're the only one for you and you're the only one for them. This just means you've met a counterpart, which is someone that you have done a previous lifetime with. You know, you feel them on a deep soul connection. So they awaken you. They awaken the best parts of you. Now, of course, they might also awaken the worst parts of you as well, but they awaken the, they awaken the best parts of you too. You might feel completely re-inspired. You might feel alive when you're around this person. You might feel like you just want to take on the world when you meet them when you reconnect with them once again, because there's a familiarity there. Now, remember this goes both ways. So this is your person as well. So I feel like when you guys first met, when you first came together, there was like this major ignition of fire and passion. And that already came up before. You guys already experienced this fire and this passion, this in temptation, major chemistry. This gets reignited again in this life. You feel it again. It's very intense with this person, okay? So let's see what else is, is coming through. Okay, interesting. But what is also triggered is that need to please. That need to please the other person by maybe overcompensating, overgiving. I don't want you to leave. I want to do everything for you. I'm not even going to I'm not even going to talk to you about what I need because I I I don't want you to leave. So to me what it does is it triggers because this is such an intense energy when you meet this person, you don't want to lose it. So you immediately go into this almost like state of I can't lose this like like a drug. I have to I have to please this person. I have to I'll do anything to, to keep this energy alive because it feels so amazing. It feels so good. It's something that I just have never felt before. So it puts you into this state of wanting to please this person. But it's kind of like what it does is it ends up backfiring on you because then you might not get your needs met because you're so busy pleasing. Now, this goes for this person as well. Maybe they really wanted to please you because they feel really good in your energy, of course, at first. But then as time goes on, maybe they cannot follow through with what they said. They can't follow through with what they promised. They wanted to please you because they didn't want to lose you. They didn't want to disappoint you. So maybe this person told you things knowing that they weren't going to be able to be that person for you. But in the moment, it felt so good. They, you brought out the best parts of them and the best parts of them were like, yes, I can do this. I can take on the world. But when reality kind of came settling down, maybe after the, the honeymoon phase kind of was starting to dwindle down, this person realized that they could maybe not please you in the way that you needed them to. So you guys activated this within each other but it was for diff different, different things came out. Different things came out. Interesting. All right, so let's see what else. It was both of you, you guys, with the two of swords. Wasn't just one person. It takes two to tango. It takes two to tango. You guys both did it. You guys, you guys both got yourself in a pickle here. I feel like the person watching this video you guys just wanted to give everything to this person because it felt so amazing. It felt so good. You felt truly alive. You feel like you met, you know, your, like your counterpart. You feel like you met a part of your soul. And so you do anything for that. This person also felt the same. And so maybe they told you things because they didn't want to lose you. 
but you both ended up at this crossroads with, with each other. Well, not crossroads, stalemate, two of swords. You guys kind of blindly went into this. You weren't really thinking about were you ready? What kind of baggage did you have? You know, have you, have you, just are you ready? Interesting. All right, let's go ahead and get another layer. I am your biggest fan. So the cheerleader basically is really cheering somebody on. Why does someone need a cheerleader? Maybe somebody needs a cheerleader because they're down and out. They have a lot of issues. I really feel like you, the person watching the video, were a cheerleader for this person. Now, they could have been a cheerleader for you too, as in they really help you to um, do things that you wouldn't normally have done. You had a boost of confidence that you didn't have before. But I really feel like there's, this um, individual may have had some things going on in their life and you were very much that person that wanted to please them. And so you were there saying, yes, it's okay. Take the time that you need. Do what you need to do. I understand that kind of thing. But at the end of the day, there was a short end of the stick here and I feel like you're the one that got it. So you're learning something about yourself. You're learning something about, you know, basically lying to yourself, lying to yourself and other people just to keep something alive. But you're like almost in a way selling yourself out for this feeling, which is interesting because that came up in the past. So that selling out could have been you as well. You sold yourself out as in you weren't true to yourself because you didn't want to lose this person. Interesting. We have surrender your ego. So of course, what is the ego, right? The ego is attached to things, material things. They're, it's obsessed. It needs to be fed. So what I'm seeing here is that if we can surrender our ego and our attachment to this person, then we don't have to be in this people-pleasing energy. We can just be true. We don't have to be afraid that we're going to lose them if we say no or if we let them go. So I feel like the person watching this video, what, what this person has triggered within you because you guys have like this very um, insane chemistry and this passion and everything that you feel when you're around them, that you want to continue to feed that part of yourself that may, might even be like kind of obsessed or just you're, you're wanting to just surrender yourself to this feeling because it feels so amazing. It feels like nothing you've ever felt before. So you almost sell yourself out. Sell yourself to the devil just to feel it once more. That's just the energy I'm getting here. I know it sounds very dramatic, but that's what I'm getting. I feel like your person, I'm going to say this real quick too. Your person kind of does the same with you, especially if they're with someone else in this life. So if this is a um, scenario repeating itself, your person can't help themselves. And that does, yes, it sounds like an excuse because it really is actually. They may not have um, discipline to say no to their appetite for you. They, they may not know how to say no. They, they may go in between you and their other partner because you feed that part of them and it's so intense that they feel like they can't say no. But all it does is it, it just ultimately doesn't serve either one of you because there's obviously, I feel, some sort of an issue or problem here with that two of swords stuck energy. Yeah, with the Knight of Swords. So the Knight of Swords basically has to take some sort of action. The Knight of Swords with the actions that they take can sometimes hurt other people. And I just feel like your person, because they might be in their ego still, so they're making decisions out of their ego, their appetite, they're not really considering everybody else. They're either not considering you or they're not considering some, somebody else in the mix too. So what it ultimately ends up doing is their actions end up cutting people, which is why they're coming through as the Knight of Swords. We also have Gemini's energy. I feel like your person is able to be with you and someone else. It's that twin energy. There's two sides of this person. They're able to have a relationship with someone else and a relationship with you. And maybe that's you as well. So there could be third party for both people, but we feel like we've got this completely different relationship with this person. This individual feels like they have a relationship with this person, but their connection with you is completely different. So there's a rationalization of being together in this lifetime because you don't feel like you're doing anything wrong because you feel like you're so deeply connected to this person. Um, so you rationalize it. And I just feel like at the end of the day, 
you know, that's great and everything, but it doesn't really fix anything. <laughs> so there's a lot of, a lot of frustration here with this whole dynamic. All right, let's see what else comes through. Oh man. All right, parasite, I will suck the life out of you. So there is some kind of a feeding going on. Someone is feeding off of someone's energy. That could be you. Maybe you're wanting to feed off of this person's energy. I both feel like you guys are feeding each other's ego just in different ways. But it, be, it can become parasitic. So when it becomes parasitic, it becomes like an addiction, a toxin. Um, it, 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 it can become very unhealthy. So your connection with this person, it brings out the best parts in you, but it also brings out the worst parts in you. That's what I'm getting. And that can be very frustrating and it can be very up and down. It can be very exhausting and draining. People can be back and forth here. You know, they're in, they're out, they're in, they're out. So there's this constant energy. So we have surrender unhealthy relationships. See, I feel like the two of you, um, you have this uh, very intense relationship, but then it can sometimes turn into an unhealthy relationship, right? Where it causes you to feel like I've got to let go of this because it's unhealthy for me. It's not good for me. So you and this person could go back and forth where you're, you're together and then you're pulling away. Okay. We're, we're good for each other. We're all in. And then we're out because this is draining my energy. It's not good for me. There's just a lot of up and down with this person and it's on both sides. Now there could also, be other unhealthy relationships that people are attached to it could be you or your person so let's go ahead and go into your person's energy if they're with somebody that they don't truly love but they're with them for career and finances uh financial purposes survival purposes kids whatever um but yet they're they're coming to you and they get fed and then they go back that is an unhealthy dynamic and an unhealthy you know situation for everyone so I just feel like there is some kind of a dynamic that some of you are stuck in with this person and a lot of it has to do with your past life story with them. So you guys are trying to maybe break this cycle in this life, but you're already having a real difficult time. And we have the Ace of Cups. I really like this and the reason why is because it starts with the self. That's what's necessary here. So what this ultimately does, this triggering of all of this parasitic energy, this obsession, this intensity, you know, the ego, everything, it pushes us back to our own cup. It brings us back to the center of ourselves, which is what do I need to work on? What does my cup look like? Am I ready? Am I fulfilled? Am I trying to give of this empty cup? Am I going to take my cup and pour it into somebody else's cup, but then not have anything for myself? There's a lot of lessons when it comes to this connection with this person. There's a lot of things that are coming up here um, in order to point the person back to loving themselves. So it's kind of like if you have an unhealthy relationship that keeps kind of playing out with another person, at some point, we have to look at the relationship that we have with ourselves. Maybe there's something missing. Maybe there's something that we don't want to face. So essentially, this person and you are, in a way, it's good that you guys have come into each other's lives because it helps the two of you kind of settle your differences within yourselves. And if you guys can settle these differences within yourselves and do this healing and this work, then perhaps you guys will be able to either release each other or you guys can release these unhealthy patterns and actually come together and have happiness together. Because I feel like in the previous life, this last lifetime, it was all there, all the same stuff, but I'm not sure that you guys were actually able to be in a union. I didn't really see any cards of union. I saw a lot of stuck energy and I saw people that were kind of, you know, um, it was, it was very, uh, forbidden. Couldn't be together for some reason, weren't out in the open. There was a lot of hiding. So if this is something that's going on where you feel hidden or you feel like your person is just, you know, um, being, you know, they're hiding stuff or, or, or they have other things going on and you're trying to figure out where you fit into their world. This is some kind of history repeating itself. And so it might be that your lesson here in this whole situation is for you to love yourself enough to say, you know what, that is not going to work for me. Why am I continuing to 
try to feed off of this kind of person that's dead where there's just no life in there anymore. It's not even feeding me. It's not even sustaining me. At what point am I going to drink from my own cup? At what point am I going to stop looking to this person to nourish me? I need to start nourishing myself. So I feel like that might be a lesson here. But anyways, you guys, that's what I have for you so far. So if you guys would like to go deeper with me, you guys would like to, you know, go a little bit more into this. We are going to go into the unfinished business that still exists between you and your person. The main reason that you guys have connected in this particular lifetime, we're going to take a look at how they feel towards you in their life currently, as well as upcoming energies as you guys both move forward in this life. So just, um, thank you so much for choosing to watch this reading with me and, if you guys are interested, that link will be down below how you guys can access the extended. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.